So, we come to something else, which is, can you be free of pressure? You understand? To observe the pressure of institutions, right? The institution of the church, institution of uh, government, the institution of so many things. The word institution comes from the word Latin and so on, to stay, be put where it is, don't move it. So we are generally under great pressure of institutions. Perhaps you may not be aware of it, but if you observe, you are. Institution, democratic, totalitarian, uh, socialist, you cannot follow this constant pressure. Then there is the pressure of ideologies, right? the ideal, which is perhaps more deadly then the economic pressure, the pressure of theories, <coughs> right? Do you know all this? Are you aware of all this? The pressure of books, the pressure of knowledge, the pressure of authority, the pressure of a family, the pressure of the wife of the husband and the husband of the girl and both this constant pressure. And the pressure of experience, of knowledge. You understand? This isn't just the pressure of somebody over you, government or somebody, but inwardly, this enormous pressure of <coughs> having acquired experience, knowledge, and that knowledge is pressure, putting pressure all the time, do this, don't do that, this is right, this is wrong, you must have more knowledge. Are, is one aware of all this? I'm afraid not. And the pressure of relationship, right? We won't go into all that, we will a little later as we go along. So we are saying, you cannot observe this extraordinary structure of the centre, the concern about the centre. And to observe that freely, without any pressure, there must be freedom to look. But most of us are under pressure. Most of us, when we observe, have a motive. The motive becomes the pressure. When I observe, I must understand it. I must get beyond it. I must, there must be a reward at the end of the beastly show. You understand? This great, constant pressure of, through motive, through desire, through reward, avoiding punishment and so on, as long as there is that weight, observation into the cause why human beings have reduced themselves to such narrow little human entities, so concerned about themselves from morning till night. Otherwise you won't have gurus. 
Otherwise you won't have really priests and religions. Other, otherwise you won't have all this enormous, complex, psychological priests. You understand? All that indicates, naturally, this concern about oneself. And can one live without this concern at all? Then only there is peace. Then only there is love and compassion. Then where there is centre, held by thought as the mean and narrow groove, there must be suffering and the violence and the brutality, the cruelty, the hate, the whole of that is centred there. That is an actual fact. Then the next question is, is it possible to break it down? Not with a chisel and a hammer, as most of us are apt to do, psychological hammer, psychological, making an effort, discipline, control, sacrifice, denying, reject, which are all hammer, right? So we are asking, is it possible to break it down, these walls that one has built around oneself, without a single movement of effort? Because if you make an effort, you are identifying yourself what will happen when you break down the wall? You understand? Which is still another structure of the narrow self. I wonder if you see all this. Yes? Right? So, can this be broken down? That is the problem. That is really the central issue for all humanity. There is no other issue, politically, religiously, economically, to, for man to end this colossal self centered thought, this subtle selfishness which brings division, all the rest of it. That is the central issue, and that is the central issue of religion, not all this circus that is going on in the world, in churches, in mosques, in temples, in religious gatherings. The essence of religion is the ending of the Self, totally, completely. <laughs> 